Hi everyone, welcome to this video. My name is Laura and I am a feminine energy and masculine energy coach and today I'm going to be sharing one of my favourite topics within this umbrella which is conflict and I think the reason why it's one of my favourite topics is because growing up I like many people experienced an environment where healthy resolution of conflict was just not really a thing. No one really knew how to do it. And so I developed some very toxic coping mechanisms for how to get attention, how to get my needs met. And there was really no conflict resolution at all. And I know that through speaking with clients and just people that I, my friends, conflict is this word that just makes people's bodies just completely tense up. And, and they just really wanna keep this at bay. And I also hear people talking about being in a relationship where there's no conflict and this is kind of worn like a badge of honour. And I want to distinguish that this, my personal belief is that conflict is very, I see very different to an argument. So for me an argument is, is normally like you've lost control by that point, you know, if you're shouting and screaming at somebody. And an argument for me looks like just um, this like war where someone sends a bomb and then someone else sends a bomb and no, no, neither party is actually listening to the other. Whereas healthy conflict resolution for me is about dealing with natural things that come up because if you're in a relationship, close intimate relationship with somebody and you're in your authenticity, then disagreements and, and conflict is gonna, are gonna come up. But it's about how to navigate them. And this is, this is just such a fascinating topic for me that I love learning more and more about all the time and, and practicing wherever I can. So <clears throat> I don't think I don't see conflict as something that should be avoided. Um, however, to avoid like a, a high level of, of conflict, uh, what I would recommend is this um, something that is for me the basis of feminine energy, and that is really staying with the body. So those like little niggles that come up here and there. Um, to really be with them and see if those can be resolved by ourselves first and foremost and then if it's if by feeling into them you realize that there's something that you need to express to your partner or that other person to go to them and this is particularly important for men because men are very single focused and they need to know if something is important for us then it's really helpful to go to them and say you know honey i'm really um and there's something i'd like to discuss um, please let me know when is a good time for that and more often than not they'll say yeah I have some time right now let's go or yep yeah, in in half an hour whatever so you've you've now got his attention and that's really important and you've gone into it in a very calm way it's not something that's happening in that moment where he's done something that's triggered you and then there's this reaction so we're now coming at it from a response because we've gone away and we've, we've already felt into it ourselves so we know how this thing makes us feel so let me just have a look. Yeah, this what this also can prevent is this kind of passive aggressive um, reaction in the moment where we're expressing a, a need or a, a feeling, but in this in this non-direct way, where we are kind of expecting someone to um, really know how we want them to behave or know how to meet our needs without expressing it ourselves, and this is a really really unhealthy trait. So I have five points I want to share here first and the first point is to check the environment. So <clears throat> are you in a, do you have enough time for example, is it, are you on your phone right now? You know, is this a conversation that might be better had in person or at least not over text message but you know actually by talking to that person because so many, so many issues can come up when we're texting. The next thing, point number two, is is really empathy for that other person. So to really first and foremost be there for that person. So if they've brought a, an issue to you, to be in your body and to become aware of how that's making you feel. Maybe you've noticed that it's triggering you. Maybe you've noticed that it's making you feel sad or angry. But to first really try to be there for that other person. And how is this person feeling? Okay, you can sense that there's maybe some anger coming from him. 
and to reflect that back to him. For me, I find this is the most powerful tool to really um, simmer this um, any any kind of high intensity conflict off the back. So, well, I can I can sense that you're feeling really angry and really frustrated because I um, didn't take the bin out that I said I would, for example. That person in front of you now feels really seen and heard. They can now relax because what I see happening is this like bomb throwing is because that person doesn't feel seen and heard. So they're then not able to see and hear the other person because they're still trying to get their needs met. You know, it's like a, it's like a crying child um, who's having this reaction because no one's seeing them. So by actually just acknowledging how the other person feels and it really this should be coming from our bodies, you know, over time to practice, like how does, how would that feel? Yeah, I can imagine that must be really frustrating, you know, um, but you know, to connect with, connect with that person in front of you, you know, well, yeah, that he must be feeling really sad by that. That's actually probably pretty annoying. Even though I have my own version or I have my own reasons, whatever, this person's feelings are still valid and I want to, I care about them and so I want to validate them for them. So point number three is a feeling statement. So this is where um, you would then connect in with your body deeper and express how this is making you feel and you might then um, express that back to them. And not in any kind of attacking way, um, but really making it as personal to you as possible. Um, so that could be, you know, I feel, I feel really, um, I feel really sad. I feel really sad that, that you feel like that or, um, yeah, I, I also am feeling quite angry now. I can feel my heart, um, heart rate is rising and I can feel some fire in my chest or something like this. And if necessary, um, this is a time when some space can be taken. So, you know, it, connecting with the body takes a practice over time. And if necessary, it could be good to say something like, I, I really just I really would like to feel my way through this um, so I'm going to take myself off um, for you know 20 minutes or something and then I, I would really like to come back and resolve this it's also at this point good to be aware of our boundaries so if this person is coming to us with a, an issue they want to resolve but they are perhaps shouting at us or they are perhaps um, name calling or something like this, speaking to us in a way that doesn't feel respectful, this is absolutely now your right to set a boundary. So to express how it feels. So I, I see boundaries and feminine energy first and foremost as being a feeling statement. So someone shouting at me, I feel scared. I feel scared right now. And more often than not, that person will because we haven't tried to problem solve for them, they'll notice that emotion in us and they will turn down their voice. If they don't, this is when I would say a masculine energy boundary might be needed, which is if you continue to shout at me, I'm gonna have to leave the room. And I really just want to say that it is, I, I've put up in, in, my, in my time with a lot of quite aggressive and disrespectful behavior because I wasn't really sure, is this okay? Am I supposed to be okay with this? Am I supposed to accept this? And really now I am, I feel very firm, uh, I believe very firmly that it's, it, you know, if something really feels not good for you, then it's really okay to say that this behavior is not acceptable to me. And I think very often if we've experienced certain behaviors in our childhood, then when we, we then we then attract partners who display the same kind of behaviors and then we don't know okay what is normal actually what is okay to accept and that really comes back to again being deeply in the body and you know this is actually making my stomach feel a bit, a bit uneasy you know i feel a bit sick um and it's okay to express that to that person So yeah, if th these steps are, are really, if that person in front of us is able to have this, you know, level-headed adult conversation, if they come straight off the back, if they suddenly something happens and they start raging, then this is where you really would say like a really quick, 
I'm feeling angry and you just walk away we'll, I'll talk we'll talk later with a you know a softened face um, you know no aggression no passive aggression but just you know we'll talk later don't engage with them and give that man the time and space to fix this issue himself so I'm going to end this video by just giving a couple of scripts that I really love. So one of them is, you must feel so tired. I also feel tired. I love you and I want to fix this. What can we do? So again, this is such a loving, soft, compassionate sentence. This is why I really love this because it's really just like, you know, the most important thing for me here is our connection. I'm reaffirming my love for you and I'm, I'm saying I want to fix this and I'm offering that over to the man to see what he can offer as a solution. This is really important. The second script is I'm taking myself for a walk to cool off. It would feel lovely if you wanted to join me, otherwise perhaps we could connect when it feels right. Again, this is a real like softening of the situation. Um, and. Th these approaches are really like this is the adult approach and this is such a huge topic you know to move from the re reaction of the inner child to reacting from the adult these scripts and these tips are all well and good if we're able to be in control of our emotions in that time and when I say being in control I don't mean to suppress them but, but to be connected with them and to be aware of them and so when you first start to move from this space of of unhealthy conflict into healthy conflict, it does take some time. And so it might mean that at the beginning there is a lot of, okay, I hear you and I'm feeling, I'm not sure how to feel about this. I'm gonna take myself away, you know, and go and be with those emotions or go and be with that inner child and come back when you are in that, that space to be able to express from the adult. And because the adult is really just this, you know, the adult, is the is the is the loving and accepting you know it's more connected with the with our higher selves with god and it's the child that is is feeling the need to respond to react in these more aggressive or passive aggressive ways that we would that we were taught in childhood you know to go around the houses to get our needs met rather than actually just expressing vulnerability i'm feeling really sad and our need I would really love a hug right now. A hug would feel really good. Um, and to not put the expectation on our feelings for, on that other person, um, which means that first and foremost, you know, our no one can make us feel anything, and it is our responsibility for how we how we feel. And that might mean taking ourselves off for a little time to comfort and self soothe ourselves. And it might mean eventually to, to, to leave a relationship if the man isn't able to come together with you and have healthy conflict. So this is such a big topic and these are just a few tips for now. Um, if you have any questions or any comments about this topic then please feel free to leave them below. And I will see you next time. Bye for now.